Shalom. This is Reb Yosef talking to you about Tsum Gedalia. The day after Rosh Hashanah is the fast of Gedalia. It's one of four fasts commemorating the destruction of basically both temples. In this case, it's the first temple. And the essential uh, thing that we're remembering and mourning is really the uh, destruction of the first temple. And uh, you have the date that it was actually destroyed, the 9th of Av, and another three dates. Uh, the 17th of Tammuz is basically more about the second temple. Uh, it's the day that the walls were breached. Um, the, uh, the Tanakh talks about the days that the walls were breached um, uh, in the first temple, it's also in Tammuz, I think it may, may say the ninth. Uh, in any case, various explanations and attempts to reconcile the two, the two dates are given. Uh, in any case, the date that it's remembered is on the 17th of Av. The other two are the beginning of the siege by um, Bavel of Nebuchadnezzar, during the first temple period, and this one, which is the um, the feast of Gedalia, which is when Gedalia ben Achikam was um, assassinated. Now, what happened after the Babylonians conquered Israel? And in fact, it already had been conquered, but there were. Uh, various rebellions and problems between the Jews and the Babylonians. And uh, finally the Babylonians came and they took the king into captivity. They exiled a lot of people. They, are, they, are already, they already had to exile, exiled a lot of people before. Um, and what remained were basically uh, the farmers. And the Babylonians simply wanted, it was now called Judea, uh, or Judah, after the tribe of Judah, Israel, that had already gone into exile. Um, they just simply wanted them to be a province in their empire, with, uh, and their man to govern it was Gedaliah, uh, who was not from the house of David, and as a result, the, one of the descendants from the house of David uh, who al allied himself with Ammon and Moab, uh, enemies of the Jewish people, and um, he assassinated Gedaliah. When he assassinated him, he also killed the Babylonian bodyguards that were so that were uh, assigned to him. Uh, but the people remaining. In Israel, the Jews that remained all fled basically to Egypt, and with that, there were no Jews whatsoever, zero in the land of Israel. And as a result, this was is called the, the extinguishing of the last ember of Jewish life in the land of Israel, and it's also the the decisive end of the first temple period. As a result, it's reckoned as one of the four fasts for the destruction of what you could call the first commonwealth. It started with the uh, uh, the Olay Mitzrayim, the Jews who left Egypt, and it ends with this. Okay? The observance of it is like the other four fasts, and like all fasts in general, in that you say slicho. These are liturgical poems commemorating the day. Now, it also falls during the ten days of penitence, and um, when slichot are already be, being said, uh, their intention is different in the ten days of penitence, in that you're preparing for the high holidays, and you are also requesting forgiveness in an aspect of soul-searching, in general, where you have fallen, fall, fallen short as a human being, 
where you have wronged other people. Okay. So what I would like to do is go through one of the um, pew team that is um, specifically related to Tsum Gedalia. The uh, other pew team are just generally about tshuva. Okay. It's called Avlad Navshi. My, my soul is in mourning. And it's a it's poetic. It goes according to the olive base. And so Avla Navshi Vachasak Ta'ri. My soul is in mourning and my uh, shall we say my face is darkened. Bait to farti kanashaf bo ha'ari. The house or uh, my beautiful house, the house of my glory, meaning the temple, poetic dis- poetic description, okay, uh, has been smashed by the line, okay, uh, so Nebuchadnezzar is compared to a lion. Gam poletasi asher azvu she'eri. Okay, also the ones that escaped, the refugees, um, that um, they're also left. Okay, now what this is talking about is when the temple was destroyed, there were survivors, quite a few of them, and they remained in Israel. This is talking about the the uh, Tzum Gedalia, which means that even they are gone. Okay, Doacha Kahayon B'Shlosha B'Sisrei. They were crushed on this day, the third of Tishrei. That's the date that it's observed. Some people say it's actually Rosh Hashanah. Continuing to the second stanza, Ha'ish Vahamayim Hazedonim Shetafunu B'Dalakim. Okay. The fire and the water that were uh, raging, that's how uh, Mitsuda translates it, um, <clears throat> they ramp in fire and water, okay, they flooded me and they pursued me. It's, it's, what it is, it's, it's different different uh, aspects of metaphors that are common in poetry gives it its beauty uh, fire and water being destructive agents um, and it's a symbol okay that in kadalakam is like uh, something that's burning may burn very rapidly that that's how it, it fled after all um, Actually, it was really after Tisha B'Av, uh, uh, something like six weeks. Okay. Uvasasu Mikdash Uvazah Kalkam. Okay, it said the, these, this raging flood it crushed or the, the temple and it plundered okay, its its portion, meaning the, the portion that we're talking about, <coughs> are the Jews. Again, so this is, uh, again, Tzum Gedalia, where it's whatever remained is, is, is being destroyed. Ziknei She'eris Ashir Patu Bayom Nakam. The elders, okay, those are the good people, the wise people, that they escaped on the day of vengeance. The idea of the destruction of the temple is, um, was destroyed because of the sins of the Jewish people. As a result, Hashem took out his anger on the wooden stone of the temple rather than, than taking it out on the people themselves. It's also a form of punishing the people by destroying one of their most their most important shrine. Okay. Hubla Atta Biyom Tsum 
Gedalia ben Achikam, okay, that they were destroyed now on the feast of the of Gedalia ben Achikam. Next stanza: Tarfu da las haaretz yeter hagazam achal haarba bemeretz. Okay, that the people who were the Am Ha'aretz, Am Ha'aretz uh, generally means simple people, um, the people who live off the land. Uh, Dalat is that they were poor, so they were torn away. It says what was left by the um, cutting locust, that's a gazam, was eaten by the swarming locusts. So it's, it's the idea of one plague following another plague. Kormim the yogvim pekudas margis art. The um, vine trimmers and the farmers, okay, uh, they were left on the orders of uh, the person who uh, angers the land or shakes the land. That's the Bukadnezer. Lo hatu, velo haya bam godir gadir va omed beperets. Okay, that they were burnt up, they perished in the flames, and there wasn't anybody uh, who could erect a fence. They didn't have anyone to protect them and stand for them in the breach. In other words, um, if you're talking about a soul, uh, an army or soldiers, uh, what you're talking about is somebody who could put up a rampart or, or somebody who, if it's, uh, bro- something is broken, you could, he, he can stand the hole and block the enemy for coming in. But in the case of the Jewish people, um, the idea that the Jews may be great soldiers is of secondary importance. Uh, the idea is that there were people who were basically cadaven for them, who could um, say that these are the merits of the Jewish people. This is why HaKadosh Baruch Hu should basically take care of them and be looking out for their welfare and give them all sorts of brachas. What it's saying is that they were gone. Ma asapir an chosad atsumos nakta nafshi umi ma kahelosi agumot. So, so the, this is the poet talking. He's saying, "What can I say about this?" He says, uh, "I'm groaning and moaning about this. My soul is literally." Cut off. Uh, it's he, what he's saying is that um, he's estranged. Uh, part of uh, what happens when the Jewish people uh, commit sins. This is when you're talking about the sins of the nation. You will always have good people in the Jewish people. Okay. However, when the nation as a whole strays. And when it's straying from God, it's straying from the good people. The idea of someone who's good is somebody who has learned the Torah and live, really lives according to its precepts and with his full heart. When the people are estranged from the Torah, they are also going to be estranged from the people who love the Torah and live according to its precepts and to a certain to the extent that they really have become personifications of the Torah. So what he's saying is he is in fact one of them and that the grieving nation is estranged from him. Surigenu ashir nisharu nikot esh lata'atsumos says that the, uh, the vines that remained okay, that they were, uh, so to speak, they were the survivors of the uh, powerful fire, the fire of the destruction of the temple. When you're talking about vines, uh, a vine is a poetic term for a tzaddik and a chacham. Uh, 
just like a vine produces grapes which produce wine, that's the symbol of a chacham and a tzaddik. Od heim lo niskayamu benitashu bechemos. Okay, like they said, they, they, they couldn't endure, so to speak. Either physically they died or they were scattered. In other words, an, an aspect of, of estrangement is scattered. Uh, what it means is you still have the tzaddikim, they exist, but they are fragmented. You don't have a community of tzaddikim. You have individuals, and they're, they're in unusual places. They're not in the capital city. They're out in the countryside somewhere. So uh, they're far away from other people. Okay. Panecha ad Masai mi menu tastir. Sa'akasenu shama ba'asirenu tatir. Now this is the, 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 the prayer of the nation where they are asking rhetorically to God, how long are you going to hide your face from us? Okay. The, it's an aspect of tshuva because one of the reasons that, uh, that God is hiding his face from them is because they don't want to see him. Okay. What happens, though, over time is uh, the idea of the face of God means it's the face of truth, the face of wisdom, the face of benevolence, uh, that you start losing the characteristics of Hashem, the character of Hashem, and then you say something is really very wrong, and you start searching, so to speak, for the face of Hashem. And part of the search is asking God to reveal himself. That, that's is essentially this line is an idiom. And it, it continues that God should hear their, uh, their shouts, their cries. Uh, and that their captives he should release. In other words, what happens is you have people who are physically captives, Okay, you can all even look at it as the tzaddikim, and also people become uh, captives of their own mishagasi, that they should be able to escape from their uh, stupidities. Okay? They should be released of these bonds. Kadosh pita ki ein ba'adenu matir. says the Holy One, he should take note because there isn't anyone for, who can daven for them. Re'ei b'dalusenu v'shivacha b'peh naktir. says you should see our poverty and the uh, praise in our mouth, we, we will crown you. Um, not so much a condition. Um, what it's saying is that God should tend to their poverty and release them from the poverty. Uh, and the idea is that the poverty is inhibiting them from, from actually singing the praises of God. The idea, one of the ideas of the Jewish people is so to speak, their um, the chorus or in the choir for a um, a pageant or an affair that is that is praising God, and what they're saying is because we're poor, because we're bound up, because we're persecuted, we really can't do that. We would like to do it. We've changed our minds. We, this is what we want to do. You no longer have to do horrible things to us to teach us a lesson. We've learned the lesson. Should do deinu midorv la dor umikates la kates. 
Shoresh Safa Ma'o Faith Osano Okates. So it says that we've been plundered, it says in every generation and from every direction. So, so it's recounting the, the, the sufferings of the Jewish people. So to speak, it's an appeal to have, that God should have pity on them. And then it, it's a quote from, I believe it's Yeshayahu, uh, Tsefa, a flying snake, or a, it's more precisely a flying viper, it's a poisonous snake, uh, it has stung us. In other words, we've been bitten on up. Takif lemishpatenu ha'ir vahakets tekapir laavonosenu v'nomir kates. So it says that it refers to God as being powerful, and he's saying that he should uh, arouse and awaken himself. To his um, to uh, to their case, uh, so to speak, um, he should avenge the wrongdoing that's been done to him. Uh, what it the nature of punishments often is? It's a psalm you design where uh, where David Melech says, "Ask for God to pro." To, to rescue them from the Rashaim that are the sword of God. And the idea is that when HaKadosh Baruch Hu, um, punishes someone who's been very bad, one of the ways he does it is by having bad people do the things that he really deserves. That's the idea. However, the idea also is the guy who's doing the punishment should also be punished. And that there is a degree of um, satisfaction, joy, self-indication when you see these rotten people uh, getting bad things happening to them. Uh, to a certain extent, uh, Often they're doing the same bad things that uh, the person being punished has done. Uh, so as a result, when you say, look, I want to be avenged for these things, you're saying that um, I regret the sin. Uh, very often uh, when you're talking about li these poems uh, in, in Juve in general, if the person has to do it openly and publicly, it's going to be very difficult and he may not do it. So as a result of that, it's best to just have gentle illusions where he gets the message, but he really changed. So it says, and this is the end, where it actually says that, that, they, that their um, iniquities should be atoned for. The idea is iniquities, are, it's a strong word, it's basically things that a person has done brazenly. Uh, means that they should be scrubbed away, uh, scoured. It's an, it involves a degree of pain. And say this is the end. Okay, in other words, you could look at it as saying that it's the end of our suffering, or the idea of Kate's is like the, the end of uh, the world as we know it in the beginning of a new world, meaning that the redemption should come. Thank you.